So it's now my pleasure to ask the Honourable Jane Philpott to just give us a few words. Jane Philpott was elected as MP for Markham Stouffville in October 2015 and appointed very rapidly as Minister of Health on November the 4th, 2015. And prior to entering politics, Dr. Philpott led an extensive career herself in family medicine, public health, medical education, and global advocacy for HIV AIDS. Hence, she is really no stranger to the work of our laureates tonight. She's also an associate professor in the University of Toronto's Department of Family and Co Community Medicine. So please join me in welcoming the Honourable Jane Philpott to the stage. Thank you very much, Dr. Rassant, for the kind introduction. It's fantastic to be here tonight. Congratulations to you on your appointment as President and Scientific Director of the Gairdner Foundation. Uh, wonderful colleagues and distinguished guests, it's a pleasure to be here. And to be introduced by you, Janet, as you take on this new role, you have been leading uh, a leader in Canada's science for decades now. I'm impressed by the groundbreaking work that you have done yourself, and we, we need, must make sure that that is mentioned tonight, your work in developmental and stem cell biology. And you've led the research efforts here at SickKids Hospital, and fittingly, you, I hope everyone knows, received a Gardner Award yourself in 2005. So you should be due for your Nobel pretty soon. <laughs> I think we are all honoured to have someone of your stature uh, so well qualified to lead this outstanding foundation, and I'm sure everyone in the room uh, joins me in, in thanking you for taking on this task and wishing you the very best in this new role. I realize that I may be a lame substitute for the Prime Minister, but I am very honoured to come here with his greetings tonight. I, I had the opportunity to spend some time with him this morning. He knew that I was coming to this event, and I, I bring you his greetings personally. I'm very pleased that my colleague, uh, Dr., uh, Dr. Duncan, Minister Duncan, is going to be with us shortly, and I, it's uh, nice to see some of my provincial uh, colleagues here as well. The Prime Minister has made it very clear. I hope that you've heard the message loud and clear, and he certainly uh, reminds me frequently that we are supporters of science, that we may, will make our decisions on the basis of good scientific evidence. We recognize the valuable social and economic contribution that science makes to our great country. Every day, I depend on science, I depend on evidence to make wise decisions in the work that we do. And medical science, I know from my own background, contributes in particularly concrete ways to everyday life for Canadians. It leads to greater understanding of disease, it guides the new development of treatments, and it gives physicians and other health care providers the guidance that they need to take care of the patients that they look after. But you know, on a night like tonight, we think about the fact that science in itself is its own reward. And pursuing a career in science is so rewarding and meaningful in and of itself. It helps one to understand the world. And the pursuit of knowledge is like no other. To be able to provide a framework for thinking that's useful, useful both inside the lab and outside the lab. And as I watch even my own children grow up and the three who have started to choose paths for themselves have all chosen paths of science and that makes me pretty happy. Uh, great. Great scientists like the ones that we're celebrating this evening are an inspiration. They ignite and fuel a passion for science in others. And as they start exploring and asking questions and striving to do more and to do better and to understand more deeply, they inspire us all, young and old. They serve as mentors and guides and motivators of the students who are working around them. And I certainly hear that when I, again, talking about my kids, my son, the U of T folks, I have to give another shout out to U of T. My son was uh, meeting with a, uh, uh, an engineering lab in U of T, deciding whether or not he's going to pursue some uh, graduate studies there. And he came back so fired up by the people, the other uh, graduate students that he met and the, and the leaders there. And I loved the way that the pe people like you in the room are inspiring another whole generation. So tonight, let's hear it for inspiring young people to pursue great careers. 
Tonight we are honoring so many outstanding scientists and, and uh, of course they fall into two particular themes. We have the recipients of the Canada Gairdner International Awards who are receiving well-deserved recognition for their development of revolutionary CRISPR gene editing technology and I'm really looking forward to learning more about that tonight. I wanted to particularly emphasize a couple of the other winners who are being recognized tonight for their work on, on some of the great international issues that we face. And first of all, we have Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is winning the John Dirks Canada Global Health Award for his leadership and contributions to understanding HIV infections and bringing treatment uh, to people around the world. And I followed the, doc the work of Dr. Fauci since the uh, mid-1980s when I first became aware of his work, and it's a real honour to be here tonight when he's receiving this award. And of course, our own uh, Dr. Frank Plummer, who is receiving this year's Whiteman Award for his research, also uh, much of it based in Africa, much of it on HIV transmission, as well as his leadership, of course, at the Public Health Agency of Canada's National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg. Both of these men have been on the front lines of research in HIV AIDS in other parts of the world, but also, of course, fundamentally important uh, to the health and well-being of Canadians. I spent the first decade of my medical career working, living and working in West Africa in the country of Niger as a family doctor. I witnessed the impact of HIV uh, on a country like Niger, and I'm certainly aware of the, the impact that the uh, science that these two gentlemen have produced has on lives. I was thinking tonight as I was looking at these absolutely stunning awards of something that Pericles said, and you've probably heard this over and over again, but I just love the reality of the fact that Pericles said many years ago that what we leave behind is not actually what's, what's engraved on tablets of stone, but that's what's written in the lives of human beings. And so when we think about our award recipients tonight, I know they will go home and cherish these beautiful engraved awards, but what really matters is that they've written themselves on the lives of people that they'll never meet. They've changed lives, they've saved lives, they've had an impact not only on the people that they work with every day, but the people who, uh, whose lives have been saved as a result of their work. So I want to congratulate all the award winners. We're going to learn more about their work shortly. I also wanted to just put in a, a little bit of a plug for Dr. Plummer because, of course, as Minister of Health, the Public Health Agency of Canada falls under my portfolio. And Dr. Plummer uh, was instrumental, I suspect many of you know, in establishing and implementing the vision for the National Microbiology Laboratory. And I had the pleasure of visiting the lab this year, looking at the work they were, had been doing, hearing the stories of the work they had done on Ebola. They were in the beginnings of the stages of, of doing some Zika surveillance work. I was so proud and impressed with the work of that lab. Among the best in the world, Dr. Plummer has truly been a leader and a, a mentor to so many people over the years. So, uh, as uh, on behalf of the government, I want to thank our Canadian Dr. Plummer for his outstanding work. Thank you all for making us proud. It's a pleasure to be here. Have a wonderful evening. Many thanks. Thank you, Minister Philpott.